Hello and welcome to the first video of the second module in our statistics videos. Module 2 is all about different ways of representing data visually. So we're going to get started in this video with a table called a frequency distribution. So what is a frequency distribution? Well, a frequency distribution is a table that gives the number of times that each value in a data set occurs. It tells us how the frequencies are distributed in our data set. In this video, we're going to look at two examples of frequency distributions. In our first example, we'll be constructing a frequency distribution of qualitative data. And in our second example, we're going to be interpreting or reading from a frequency distribution for quantitative data. So one of the things that's pretty cool about frequency distributions is that you can create one for either quantitative or qualitative data. So let's get started and create a frequency distribution. In this example, 30 students were asked whether they live on campus, with their parents, rent an apartment, own their own home, or have some other living arrangement. And the results of the survey are presented in the list below. All right, so I'm gonna shove the data up to the top here so we have a little bit more room to create our table. You'll notice that I have two columns, one for the housing type and one for the frequency. Whatever kind of data you've collected is going to go into that first column. So in this case, we ask students what type of housing they have. So our first column is going to be housing type. The second column is always going to be frequency because we're going to be measuring the frequency of each type of housing. My table has five rows because there were five different types of housing. Students could live on campus, they could live with their parents, they could own their own home, they could rent an apartment, or they could have some other living arrangement. So I'm just going to list those five different housing types in that first column. Now, it doesn't matter what order I put these in, I can just kind of scan your data and put them in whatever order you find them in. Okay, so the next task is to fill in the frequency column. And there are a couple of different ways that you can go about this. For example, I could look through my data and just simply count up how many times the word campus appears and put that number in the frequency column. Then I can go through my data set a second time and count up how many times parents happens and then how many times does rent happen, and so on and so forth. And this technique is pretty good if you have a small data set, so 30 values is a pretty manageable way to do that. But just to show you some other options, I'm going to use a second technique for my frequency distribution here. To construct my frequency distribution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to systematically go through my data. I'm just going to go down each of the columns in the table and put a tally mark or a little tick mark next to each of the housing types as I come across it. So for example, the first value in my data set is campus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line on the left hand side of my table to represent that I counted one campus. Then I move down to the next item in my data set, which is parents, and I'm going to draw a line next to parents. And I'm just going to keep going. So the next one is own their own home. So I draw a line next to own their own home. Then the next one is another parents. So I'm going to draw a second tally mark next to parents. And then we have parents again. So I'm going to draw another tally mark next to parents. And then when I finish with the first column of data, I move on to the next one and we have parents again. So I'm going to draw a tally mark next to parents. Please notice that these tally marks are kind of off to the side of my frequency distribution. You can think of the tally marks kind of like scrap work. So it's not part of the frequency distribution, but it's going to help me to get there. So what I'd recommend is for you to pause the video and then continue to do the tally marks. And then when you've completed that, you can unpause the video and we can check to see if we match. All right, so I'm going to fill in the rest of the tally marks here. Okay, so now that we have all of the tally marks written, we can fill in our frequency column. For the first category, campus, we have seven tally marks. So that means we came across campus seven times in our data set. And then you just total your tally marks for each category and write the frequencies in the frequency column. So we had 15 students who lived with their parents, four students who rented an apartment, three who owned their own home, and just one person who had another different type of living arrangement. 
Now, what I like to do after I finish creating my frequency distribution is a sort of really quick check. This isn't a perfect check because I'm not going to go through all the data again, but I am going to check to make sure that I at least included the correct number of items. So if I add all of the frequencies together, I should get my sample size. Because we surveyed 30 students, I should have a total number of frequencies of 30. So I'm going to add down that last column. 7 and 15 is going to make 22, plus 4 will make 26, plus 3 will make 29, plus one more gives me that 30. So we ended up with 30 total frequencies, which is what we want. That's our sample size. So this isn't going to catch if I put a tally mark in the wrong category, but it will catch if I double count or if I undercount, if I miss something. Okay, so now that we've created our own frequency distribution, let's look at an example where we're given a frequency distribution and we have to read it, we have to interpret some information from it. For this example, a simple random sample of 18 to 24 year olds were asked, how many hours do you spend reading for fun every week? And then the results were stored in the frequency distribution to the left. In the previous example, the data that we examined was qualitative. Each of our categories was a description, right? It was campus, rent, parents, own, other. In this example, each of our categories are quantitative. We have an amount of hours. So somebody could read for three hours a week, someone could read for fun seven hours a week, or however many hours. So our data here is quantitative. We're going to have to treat quantitative data just a little bit differently from qualitative data. For example, let's look at the frequency for those who read nine hours a week. In this case, there were zero people who read for nine hours. If this had been qualitative data, then I wouldn't have included nine hours in my frequency distribution because it wouldn't have been in my list. However, for quantitative data, when you have a frequency distribution, you must include all of the middle values. So because there were some who responded with zero hours all the way up through 10 hours, we have to provide every single option in between those two. So even though nobody said that they read for nine hours a week for fun, we still need to include that category because it's between the zero and the 10. This is really the only big difference between discrete data and qualitative data when you're creating a frequency distribution. All right, so let's examine some other questions about this frequency distribution. Part A, how many people don't spend any time reading for fun? Notice that this question is asking us a how many question. If your question's asking how many or what's the frequency, that means your answer should come from the frequency column. To figure out which frequency or frequencies we need to use, we're gonna look at the part that says they don't spend any time reading for fun. So if you don't spend any time reading for fun, that means you spend zero hours reading. So I wanna look in the row for zero hours and figure out how many people that was. I look over into the frequency column and there were six people there. So six people didn't spend any time reading for fun. Part B, how many people spend more than five hours a week reading for fun? Again, this question is asking us a how many kind of question, which means our answer is going to come from the frequency column. To figure out where the frequencies are gonna come from, we need to look at those who read for more than five hours a week. So this could be they read for six hours, seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, or 10, all the way from six to 10. So this means I'm gonna look in these five rows to gather my frequencies. Just a quick note that if it had said how many people spend five or more hours, I also would have included the five in my category. But since they just asked for more than five, I'm not gonna include the five. So these are the five rows I'm gonna look at. So I examine their corresponding frequencies. So I'm gonna tally all of those people up, adding them together, and I get six people. Six people spent more than five hours reading for fun. Part C is asking us to identify the sample size. Notice that we were told a simple random sample of 18 to 24 year olds were asked for this question, but we weren't told how many people were actually surveyed. So that's what Part C is asking us to find, how many people were in this sample. This is similar to our little check from the previous example. In the previous example, to make sure that we didn't overcount or undercount, we added all of the frequencies together to make sure we got the right number. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're going to add together all of the frequencies, 
and that should tell us how many people there were total. So we add all of the numbers up, and you can use a calculator for this, you can do it mentally, use your fingers, your toes, whatever you need, and you should end up with 25 people. Now I'll point out there are a couple of different ways that you can show your work for this sort of problem. If you want to, you could write 6 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. But more likely, you're just going to be typing that into a calculator. So one way to illustrate your work is just to circle the frequency column like I did here. Or you could just write the number underneath the frequency column with a little plus sign to show that you add it all the way down to get that value. Remember, showing your work is useful for two reasons. Reason number one, it helps your teacher know where your answer came from so that if you left something out or you put something extra in, they have an idea of where it came from. And reason number two, when I'm using my notes to study or I'm using my homework to study, if I just had 25 people written down, I wouldn't know where I got that from. And so that answer is not gonna be a lot of help for me. So if I give myself some kind of clue where my answer came from, that's gonna help remind me how I got that answer when I go to study. All right, so that should be it for this example. Thanks for watching this video about frequency distributions. The next video is also about frequency distributions, although they're gonna be a little bit different. For example, in this video, all of the categories were single values. So we could have somebody who lived on campus or somebody who lived with their parents. We could have somebody who read for two hours a week or for three hours a week. In the next video, our frequency distributions are going to have grouped categories. So what that means is instead of having two hours a week, three hours a week, four hours a week, and so on, we're gonna have categories that are like zero to three hours a week, four to seven hours a week, and so on. Thanks for watching this video and have a magnificent day.